I'm Johan. I work on the Boundary team at HashiCorp. One year ago, I sat exactly where you are now. I just watched Kyle Gray's talk about building a WebAssembly plugin system for his SQLC project. It's a great talk, and you should watch it if you haven't. One of the things Kyle found wasn't great about using WebAssembly for the plugins was that you couldn't build the plugins with Go. This picture is from one of his slides where he expressed frustration that he had to write the plugins in Rust. The joke being, of course, that he had to talk about Rust as it, at his GopherCon talk. At the time, Go's WebAssembly support was limited to uh, building binaries that could execute in the browser. I left GopherCon last year with a great desire to help bring WASI to Go. But before we get into that, let's talk a little bit about WebAssembly and WASI itself. WebAssembly started as a project to bring a safe, simple, and fast way to run code compiled to bytecode in the web browser. Soon after standardization, however, some started experimenting with building non-browser runtimes, such as WasmTime. Turns out, a lot of people were interested in a new computer architecture with the properties like that of WebAssembly. These new hosts allowed execution of WASM bytecode anywhere you could execute the host. But without a syscall API, it wasn't possible to do things like opening files or getting the current time. In other words, there was no way to interact with the underlying operating system. Through the effort of Mozilla and a few other companies, the WebAssembly system interface, aka WASI, was created. With WASI, there's now a standard syscall API that hosts can implement and WASM binaries can use to interact with the operating system in most ways, though not fully with networking sockets. We'll get back to that. Languages such as Rust, Python, Java, and others have implementations that allow compiling to WASI. This means you can write code once in these languages and run it anywhere a WASM runtime is supported. Cloud vendors like Fastly support executing WASI binaries directly on their edge, and Azure's managed Kubernetes offering supports running WASI binaries directly. But we're not here to talk about Rust or Python. Now that we know what we mean by WASI and WASM, we can get back to the story. After doing some research, on Sunday, the 1st of January, 2023, I posted a message to the WebAssembly channel of Gopher Slack, asking for help from others interested in help bringing WASI to Go. Together, we worked our way through three different proposals and thousands of lines of code, and I'm very pleased to say that we managed to ship it in Go 121 that was released just this August. I want to take a moment to recognize my co-contributors, Achille Roussel, Julien Fabre, Evan Phoenix, and Demian Greisky, and thanking them for help stepping up and help with the work. This project has definitely been the most ambitious thing I've ever contributed to the Go language, and I'm really proud of what we accomplished. It's a testament to the health of the Go community that we could pull this off in less than six months. Thanks also to the Go team, of course, who helped review the code. So what does it look like? Well, I'm not going to attempt a live demo here because it'd take a little bit too long. But in general, the Go code that is designed for WASI looks just like normal Go code. One notable exception is that the networking support in WASI is limited and requires non-standard extensions. For a guide on how to run your Go code, I recommend reading the blog post we wrote for the official Go blog. Here we have a small example of a Hello World program that prints to standard out when run on a WASI host. We use a script in the misc slash wasm directory to run the program using go run, which uses wasm time by default, but you can also use other hosts like wasero if you set the go wasi runtime variable. But can we do more? To get something a little more interesting, we need to reach for a third party library. As mentioned earlier, the wasi p1 spec doesn't support network sockets, but there are third party extensions to some of our hosts that do support networking. The Go standard library implementation only supports the WASI P1 spec, but our design allows third-party libraries to implement their own wrappers around host functions. In this case, we're going to reach for the stealth rocket slash net library, which has implemented Go dialers and listeners wrapping the host socket extensions. 
please note that this example code only runs in Wasm Edge and Wasi Go and may not be suitable for production use. With that said, this code example shows how to run a networking application in Go with Wasi P1, which is pretty exciting. So what happened to SQLC? To look back on Kyle's project and what might be one of the first production use cases of Go, that's Wasi support, the new Kotlin and Python plugins for SQLC are written in Go. It brought me intense joy to see this, uh, that Wasi was being used, especially since it was my original motivation for starting the work. Writing plugins like this is probably the most interesting use case for Go's Wasi support today. I'm very pleased that Kyle's SQLC is now able to write the plugins in Go, but the fact is that Wasi right now isn't practically ready for prime time. So I want to talk a little bit about the future instead. The people behind the original Wasi API are working toward hard on defining the next version of Wasi, <coughs> which will have full support for networking, but also potentially things like SQL, key value stores, and queues built directly into Wasi. Wasi is well on the way to becoming the next big compute platform. Docker can execute Wasi binaries, Kubernetes can run Wasi. Some soon, we may look at Wasi the way we look at containers today. The future for Wasi is incredibly exciting. Will you be the one standing up here a year from now talking about the next big step forward for Go and Wasi? Join us in the WebAssembly channel on the Gopher Slack. Thank you. <laughs>